Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Dayton L5 lightweight 5 inch long range quadcopter. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features, specs and setup procedure, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter you're getting a single set of Jamfren Hurricane 5125 propellers. The user manuals and wiring diagrams of the Daton Ultra Tiny VTX and the Mamba All in One F722 flight controller, two high quality Daton branded battery velcro straps, some spare screws, accessories for mounting an action camera on top of the drone, zip ties, two plastic antenna tubes, four pieces of tape for securing the motor wires, two plastic mounts for the ready receiver and JST connectors that will enable you to either directly solder the radio receiver to the flight controller or connect it using the 6 pins JST connector. As for its specs, the Dayton Roma L5 is available in a couple of versions. The analog version, which is the one I have, comes with the Runcom Phoenix 2 FPB camera and the Dayton Ultra Tiny VTX. The digital version is bundled with the Cadex Nebula Pro digital transmission system and you can also get a version that doesn't come with an FPB system. In addition, all the versions are available with either 2900 Forest compatible or 1700 KV 6S compatible 2004 motors. As for the other components, all the versions are using the Daton F722 MK1, a whoop style 25.5 by 25.5 mm F7 all in one flight controller that features an integrated 35 ampere BLADS 4 in one ESC and an onboard barometer. It is pre-soldered to an XT60 battery connector, which I recommend to secure to the frame using a zip tie and a 35 volts 470 microfarad capacitor. On the back of the frame, mounted inside a 3D printed part, which will also enable you to mount an Immortal T antenna, you can find the M8 Plus GPS unit. It is connected to the flight controller using a shielded wire, which is going to help to reduce interference. Next to the GPS, you can find a normal non-self-powered buzzer. And since I've got the analog version, on the front of the frame you can find a Mamba rebranded version of the Runcom Phoenix 2 FPV camera, and on the back of the frame the Dayton Ultra Tiny, a 20x20mm 20 20 37 channels VTX that supports RFC Trump protocol, uses an IPX antenna connector, and has a selectable output power of 25, 100, 200, and 400 milliwatts. As for the frame, which is available separately, its wheelbase is 214mm and it features a dead cat pattern. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 4mm. The thickness of the bottom, middle and top plates is 2mm. It supports both 12 and 16mm motor mounting options. The distance between the middle plate and the top one is 17mm. It supports micro-sized FPV cameras and the camera lens is well protected using these two aluminum parts. On the center of the frame you can find 20x20 20 20 and 25.5x25.5mm 25 25 M2 mounting holes for mounting your stack, on the back 20x20mm 20 M2 mounting holes for mounting the VTX, and the total weight of this build without a battery is about 216 grams. As for setting up the Dayton Roma L5, the easiest option to install a radio receiver on the analog version is to use this 7 pins JST connector, which on the digital version is being used for connecting the Cadex Nebula Pro digital video transmission system to the flight controller. In case you are going to install a Crossfire Nano receiver, you can use UL2, and in case you are going to use other types of SBUS receivers, which only require a single RX port, you can use UL1. In addition, in case you don't want to use this JST connector, you can also use UL5, and power the radio receiver using the 5 volts and ground pads of the VTX. Here you can see how the flight controller is configured. The VTX is connected to UL3, which will enable you to set it up using IRC Trump protocol. The GPS is connected to UL4, and I decided to connect the radio receiver to UL5. Under the configuration tab, as you can see, bidirectional D-shot is enabled. The motor idle throttle value is set to 6.5%, which in my opinion, after testing out this quad, might be a little bit too high. The GPS is enabled, and its protocol is set to U-blocks. Under power and battery, the voltage meter scale is set to 121, and the divider value is set to 11. The scale of the amperage meter is set to 183. Here you can see the VTX settings, and you should note that out of the box, the VTX was only configured to 25mW, 
So in case you would like to set it to all the available output power options, you should enter and save the following values. In addition, out of the box, the GPS failsafe option was not configured, so it was just set to drop, and I have a separate video about Betaflight GPS Rescue that I recommend to watch in case you are not familiar with this feature. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Dayton Roma L5, and overall, after testing it out, I think that it offers a pretty good combination of a lightweight long-range and freestyle setup. The biggest issue, however, in case you are looking to use it as a long-range platform with the analog version, is that the VTX is just not very great, at least in my experience, so for a true long-range setup, I recommend to change it to a better one. As for flight time, using this homemade 3100mAh forest lithium-ion battery, I got about 20 minutes, cruising at about 60 km per hour and covering a total distance of about 20 km. And using this 1000mAh CXS LiPo battery, which is the one that I recommend to use with this setup, I got about 8 minutes of flight time when pushing the throttle, which is pretty good as well. Using the forest lithium-ion battery, the Dayton Roma L5 didn't feel very powerful, pretty much as expected since these are the 6S motors, which I've already bench tested and I can see that on their final version now they have a nice little plastic protection on their button and after going over the frost test again I can tell you that you can also easily use a forest lithium-ion battery on the forest version and using the 6S battery the drone felt pretty powerful and it can easily carry even a full-sized GoPro camera. One more thing that is worth mentioning is that even though the GPS lock was a little bit slow, the GPS unit worked pretty well and I got between 16 to 17 satellites in an open area. And by the way, I also recommend to add a self-powered buzzer in case you are going to use it as a long-range platform since this is just a normal buzzer which is not going to work in case the battery is going to be disconnected. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and overall I think that this is a very nice quadcopter which only suffers from a mediocre VTX which needs to be upgraded, and in case you are going to get of course the digital version you are not going to have this issue, and you are going to enjoy a pretty good quadcopter that combines both long range and freestyle capabilities. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.
can show you, baby, one more time. When I fall asleep, yeah, I need you with me by my side. Side.